let me tell you, there are some truly evil people in the world. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 horrifying people you should never ask Alexa about. Number 10, Elizabeth Bathory. Elizabeth Bathory was a countess from a prestigious noble family in Hungary. It is because of her noble blood and influential husband that her heinous crimes went unpunished for so long. Once her husband died in 1604, rumors circulated that young women and girls kept disappearing around the countess's many castles. Now, most of the victims were peasants and servants, but towards the end of her reign of terror, she made the mistake of kidnapping the daughters of lesser nobility, which is how she was eventually caught and tried for homicide. Elizabeth's trial lasted for several weeks and had hundreds of witnesses testifying against her. Now, eventually, Elizabeth confessed, and she and her four collaborators were convicted of tormenting and ending the lives of hundreds of girls. Elizabeth is called the Blood Countess because she is rumored to have bathed in the blood of her victims, thinking that doing so would help preserve her youthful appearance. Now, After Elizabeth was convicted of her crimes, she was sentenced to a lifetime of house arrest. She was bricked into a series of small rooms in her castle, with just small slits for the passing of food and oxygen, where she remained for four years until her death in 1614. Number 9. Balgunas. Balgunas led a relatively normal life until she was kicked in the stomach by a man in her teens, causing her to miscarry her first child. Her personality then changed drastically. In 1881, Belle immigrated to the US where she worked as a servant, got married, and had children. She then learned how to work the insurance system, taking out large policies on her family members and their place of business. Soon after the policies were in place, her daughter started dying of stomach issues and their business is burned to the ground. Later, Belle's husband also died from intestinal distress, reportedly the one day of the year on which two of his life insurance policies overlapped. Shocker. Now, Belle collected all the policy payouts and then remarried. Within a week of her second marriage, her husband's son from his previous marriage died while under Belle's care. Within a year, her second husband was dead from a mysterious head wound. Once again, Belle collected the insurance money and moved on. Eventually, it was determined that she had ended the life of most of her suitors and boyfriends, as well as her two daughters, and it's suspected that she ended the lives of approximately 20 to 40 people over a period of about 20 years. Now, Belle was never jailed for her crimes. She emptied her bank accounts and disappeared sometimes in the early 1900s. Number 8. Delphine LaLaurie Delphine LaLaurie was a serial slayer socialite who lived in New Orleans. On April 10th, 1834, a fire broke out in her mansion's kitchen, and firefighters found a 70-year-old black woman chained to the stove. She appeared to start the fire in order to attract outside attention while Delphine was trying to save her furniture. The authorities were led by other slaves to the attic, and they were shocked. Disfigured and maimed slaves were chained to the walls or floors. Several had been subjects to medical experiments. As one man appeared to be part of some bizarre sex change, a woman was trapped in a small cage with her limbs broken and reset to look like a crab, and another woman with arms and legs removed, and patches of her flesh sliced off in a circular motion to resemble a caterpillar. There were claims that an elderly man had his face so beaten it was indistinguishable, and that one woman had her back wounded to the point where her bones were visible. Now, Some of these slaves had their mouths sewn shut and starved to death, others had their hands sewn to different body parts, and most were found dead and the remaining that were alive were begging to die to be released from the unbearable pain. Now, Unfortunately, Delphine and her husband husband fled by boat before she could be brought to justice. Number 7. Locusta Locusta was basically a potions master who was very good at her job. She was able to brew up the most violent and deadly forms of poison in the whole of Rome, and what's worse is that people knew she did it, and she wasn't even punished for it because her skills were considered to be so valuable. She used them for her own gain and for her own personal pleasure, but she was also an instrument of government. In CE 54, she was hired by Agrippa, who wanted her to end the life of Emperor Claudius in order to take over the throne. The deal was made, Claudius was poisoned, and a year later, Emperor Nero saved her from being executed for her crimes as a traitor, but only so she could end the life of someone else for him. She successfully poisoned his stepbrother and was rewarded for her services by being given a villa so that she could teach students the ways of her work. She was considered to be the first female serial slayer, but unfortunately for her, a few years later, her loyalty ran 
ran out and she was executed for her crimes. Number 6. Leopold II of Belgium Leopold II of Belgium was the second king of the Belgians from 1865 to 1909 and the founder and sole owner of the Congo Free State from 1885 to 1908. He disguised his work and made it seem humanitarian, whereas he had sinister motives and was using forced labor to move Congolese resources. Leopold II took ownership of Congo and treated it like his personal property, as he referred to himself as the Propeter. In an attempt to govern the people and their land, all sorts of inhumane and unthinkable methods were used. Sadly, Congo was looted and exploited for its natural resources, ivory and rubber. Leopold II was a brutal slave master, and by the time he was done with Congo, the country had lost a lot of its people. Otherwise known as the Butcher of the Congo, Leopold II constantly enslaved and exploited the people. The people were forced to work without pay, and he would amputate the hands of men, women, and the young when the quota for rubber was not met. Now, by the end of his rule, half the population was dead. Number five, Vlad the Impaler. Born in 1431, Vlad Tepes the Impaler earned his nickname from his favorite method of execution for enemies of the state and witches. The idea was to simply create fear so that people would not want to rise against him. He literally impaled thousands of bodies on 10 feet high poles, regardless of whether they were dead or alive, to send a message along the lines of, don't mess with me. But yeah, that definitely would have worked on me. I would not want to cross him. His aim was to cause more psychological torment than anything else, as he would laugh and eat his meals while he made his enemies watch their fellow comrades get impaled and hear their screams. He would then leave the bodies of the defeated army there to rot. Number 4. Albert Fish Albert Fish ended the lives of many of the young and was suspected in at least five homicides. He was nicknamed the Boogeyman for his predatory behavior, and he abducted Grace Budd in 1928 and wrote this letter to her mother. It read, On Sunday, June the 3rd, 1928, I called on you at 406 West 15th Street, brought you pot cheese, strawberries. Grace sat in my lap and kissed me. I made up my mind to her on the pretense of taking her to a party. You said yes, she could go. I took her to an empty house in Winchester I had already picked out. When we got there, I told her to remain outside. She picked wild flowers. I went upstairs and stripped all my clothes off. I knew if I did not, I would get her blood on them. Now, this letter is just haunting, and thankfully the court found him to be sane in order that he would be executed by the electric chair, but he was one messed up person. Number 3. Gilles de Rays You may not have heard of Gilles de Rays, but you will have heard of his best friend, Joan of Arc. When he retired from his military career, he was presumed to have dabbled in dark magic and the occult and the devil, but that's not all. Rays would command his servants to go out and kidnap boys and bring them back to his residence. He would dress them up in fine clothing and make them drink wine. When they refused, they were beaten. They were then taken to his torment chamber where they were gagged and hung up with rope. He would then take them down and declare that he wanted to play with them before either he or his servants would end their lives. Rays would sometimes sit on their stomach and laugh at them while they were gasping for air until they died. All the bodies and their clothes were incinerated and the remains were thrown into the moat. It's unclear as to how many victims he had, but it ranges from 80 to 600. Now, Rays was later executed for his crimes along with his servants by hanging. Number 2. Vincent Wangong Lee On July 30th, 2008, Tim McLean was stabbed, beheaded, and eaten while riding a Greyhound Canada bus along the Trans-Canada Highway. According to witnesses, Tim was sleeping with his headphones on when the man sitting next to him suddenly began stabbing him in the neck and chest. After the attack began, the bus driver pulled after the attack began, the bus driver pulled to the side of the road and he and all the other passengers fled the vehicle. The driver and two other men made an attempt to rescue Tim, but were chased away by Vincent, who slashed at them. Now Vincent ultimately decapitated. Decapitated Tom and displayed his severed head to those standing outside the bus, then returned to Tim's body and began severing other parts and consuming his flesh. Vincent's trial commenced on March 3, 2009, with him pleading not criminally responsible on account of mental disorder. In Vincent's mind, Tim was really a demon in disguise and an alien who needed to be destroyed. He'd also felt pressured to perform the attack by voices he believed were from God, and as you can tell here, he suffered from schizophrenia. Vincent was 
then remanded to a high security mental facility in Manitoba, where he was detained until his release on May 8th, 2015. And coming at number one is H.H. Holmes. H.H. Holmes was a con artist who liked to take the lives of people. Until his execution in 1896, he chose a career of crime including insurance fraud, swindling, check foraging, three to four illegal marriages, horse theft, and ending the lives of many. He claimed to have ended the lives of 27 people before he was arrested, tried, and executed. Now he constructed a hotel of horrors, later known as the Castle to target guests visiting the Windy City during the 1893 World's Fair. The first floor of the castle had several stores. The two upper levels contained Holmes' office and over 100 rooms that were used as living quarters. Now, some of these rooms were soundproof and contained gas lines so that Holmes could asphyxiate his guests whenever he felt like it. Throughout the building, there were trap doors, peepholes, stairways that led to nowhere, and chutes that led into the basement. Now, the basement was designed as Holmes' own lab, it had a dissecting table stretching rack and crematory. Sometimes he would send the bodies down the chute, dissect them, strip them of flesh, and sell them as human skeleton models to medical schools. In other cases, he would choose to cremate or place the bodies into pits of acid. He was discovered though for his crimes, and on May 7th, 1896, he was executed. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 horrifying people you should never ask Alexa about. Now, did you know about any of these people? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host Emily and we'll see you next time. Peace.